Chapter 1, The Corporation, Corporate Finance, 4th Edition, Burke, and DiMarzo. So there are four types of firms. Corporations is just one of the four types. So what are the other four? Sole proprietorship, partnership, and limited liability. A sole proprietorship and partnership, they both have unlimited liability. Limited liability partnerships and corporations have limited liability. So if things go wrong, if you are a sole proprietorship firm, then the owner is 100% responsible for all the doings of the firm. So if let's say the firm gets into debt and loses $200, then the owner is responsible for that $200, meaning there is no separation between the owner and the firm. Partnership is a sole proprietorship, plus it has multiple owners, not one owner. In sole proprietorship, there's only one owner, and these multiple owners are called general partners. And so it's the same as sole proprietorship, except that if the firm does something bad and, and loses money, then all of these owners are responsible for making sure that those people that they own money to are given the money. So that's partnership. Limited liability, and limited liability could be a limited liability partnership, let's say, right? So if you have a limited liability partnership, then your liability is limited to your investment. And in a corporation, that's the same thing. Your liability is limited to your investment. So if you lose more money than what you have invested as an owner, then you don't are not responsible for anything beyond your investment. So at most you can lose is the your ownership in that corporation or limited partnership. So corporations are of two types, S corporation and C corporations. S corporations have uh, some certain tax benefits um, in terms of they don't do double taxation, but the requirement is that it has to have less than 100 owners and those owners have to be United States citizens or United States residents. But in a C corporation, there's no limit. You could have as many number of owners as you want. But then what is a corporation? A corporation is an artificial being. When it's an artificial being, you get legal rights. What are those rights? There are four rights. Number one, a corporation can enter into contracts. So number one is that it can enter into contracts. Number two is that it can acquire assets. And number three is that it can incur obligations. And number four is that it has legal protection against seizure of property. So think about a corporation as an artificial being. An artificial being has these four powers, same as a legal entity. So it can enter into contracts. So the reason, there's a really good story in the book about how Dartmouth College was taken away by United States government. And that's what led to this formation of this corporation concept before it was not the case. So it's a really good read to check it out in the textbook. So I said earlier that uh, there's double taxation for corporations that are C corporations. So what is, what is that double taxation? The first is the corporations pay a tax on the profit that it makes. And the second, when it distributes dividends, those dividends have to be paid taxes on by the shareholder. So you and I, if you and I hold a share on the company, and if we get a dividend, we have to pay corporate tax because the company pays that on our, our behalf already and on the profits, but then we also have to pay tax on the dividends. So our money that we make as a shareholder first is reduced by the taxes that corporations give on our behalf on the profits and second on the dividends that we make, we have to give taxes. But the S corporations, there is no corporate income tax. And so that's the benefit there. Um, but there are these restrictions as well. Second part is ownership versus control, right? 
So as we see, there was a close tie between uh, a firm owner, a firm and, a, and an owner in sole proprietorship and partnership. But in corporation, there's this divide. There's this divide between ownership and control, meaning the owners are these public shareholders like you and I, but the control is delegated to the board. So the public shareholders, they select the board of the corporation. The board then selects the CEO. The CEO then selects the CFO. And the CEO also selects the COO. So overall, the owners are giving power and control over to the board and to the CEO. The control is to, they delegate the decision as to what investments to make, how to raise money, what financial decisions make sense, how to manage the cash flow so that there is maximum return on investment. The CFO, again, would hire a treasurer for doing capital budgeting, risk management, credit management, and uh, it'll have a controller who does taxes and accounting. The chief operating officer is responsible for like execution and uh, operations and other pieces. So you see how the corporation has this divide. The delegation of control is given to the board and the CEO, meaning the owners cannot directly control, but they indirectly control by the board and the CEO. So that's the distinction between ownership and control. This leads to this problem called the agency problem. Think about this. If the owners want to do something, but the CEO does something totally different, then CEO is, is a manager too. And if they put their own self-interest over that of the owners or the shareholders, then there's an agency problem. So how do you solve that? You solve that by compensation contracts, which basically is you make sure that you pay the CEO based on performance. So you do pay for performance. So when you do pay for performance and the CEO does pay for performance for the CFO and the COO and the CEO does it for engineering, R&D and marketing and all other teams, then you have then you have a compensation based contract which is pay for performance that limits agency problem at best as it could. It's probably not the best perfect solution, but it's the best out there. And the other way the market gives feedback to the CEO as to how they are doing is the stock price. If the stock price is going down, that means everyone's dumping the shares. So it's a good barometer as to how the CEO is performing. And if the stock price goes down quite a bit, then what happens that it can, it can be taken over, right? You could have hostile take, uh, someone can come in and do a hostile takeover. When they do that, then there is a huge chance that the CEO will be replaced and the board will be changed and so many things, right? So the stock price is a good, good barometer for feedback. Bankruptcy passes the control from equity owners to debt owners. Right, so that was a key learning for me. I thought bankruptcy means liquidation, but that's not the case. It basically, the equity owners, the shareholders are the owners of the corporation. But when the company declares bankruptcy, when let's say they couldn't uh, take care of their cash flows or they, are, they made bad financial decisions or they made bad marketing uh, decisions, they made uh, bad uh, product investment decisions. So the company goes bust, so they cannot... Um, um, take care of their money, so then they go into bankruptcy. And so the, the first right goes to the debt owners. So the debt owners have the decision to change the board, change the CEO, get the company back into a better state, or they could choose to say, hey, liquid it, sell everything. And whatever remains, uh, first they get the claim, and then they whatever remains after that is when the shareholders remain, uh, get the remaining. But shareholders typically during bankruptcy don't get anything. But there are many companies like United uh, Airlines and others who've come out through bankruptcies and have gone through multiple bankruptcies and uh, come out stronger. So bankruptcy is not equal liquidation. That was a big learning. Great. Public policy has a huge role to play, the government. Um, because when, when these corporations make decisions, you want to make sure that it's not only good for the shareholders, but also benefits the society, which uh, is a, a major stakeholder and the environment. 
So that was a good uh, good thing to think about. When you think about corporation, there's this agency problem. Stock price is a good barometer. And that brings us to the stock market. So what is the stock market, right? This is the place where uh, shares are publicly traded. You and I are stock owners of a corporation. We can share trades uh, and we can give that signal to the CEO as to how they're doing, as we discussed earlier. And uh, that's where the stock market uh, helps. And there's a primary stock market uh, where the new shares are issued, but those same shares can be traded in any other secondary markets where they were not the original place where the new shares were issued, but they were just, they're retraded. They're retraded by other, other entities. So a market, a stock market, can be categorized as primary if that's where you go typically for your new shares or it could have the role of a secondary where your shares are just being retraded. There is this concept of bid ask spread. Bid is basically whoever is selling is saying, hey, I want to sell at $18 and uh, 22 cents, $18 and two cents. But then this person who is buying saying, hey, I only want to pay $18. So there's this two cents of difference. So sell order and buy order the difference is called the bid ask spread. The asker is saying, hey, I only will buy at $18. The bidder is saying I'll buy, I'll sell only at $18.02. So the difference is two cents. And so this limit orders, which basically says how much, how many orders are uh, available to be sold, that is the limit order book. And there are certain markets where it is all open, meaning you know how many people want how many shares at what price. And there are certain where there are dark pools, meaning they don't share how much shares they are willing to share, uh, to sell. So dark pools, there are multiple new exchanges that have come in and they support dark pools as well. Um, and there's lots of liquidity in the market in the last uh, 30 years. And transaction costs have gone down in a big way. So corporations, uh, if they're public, then stock market is a, is a huge part, but not the case for private companies where these shares are never traded. All right, so that was chapter one summary. The key takeaway was corporation and then different types of firms, ownership and control and how that's differentiated, who are the people, how ownership and control is delegated, um, how the owners through the stock market give a pretty strong signal as to how they think the company is doing and some of the terminologies around uh, bankruptcies, which was quite interesting. All right, thanks.